let us uh, shift uh, and move just inferiorly a little bit and you will find the longest bone in your body uh, which is the uh, femur indeed briefly the um, let us start saying that the femur you know articulates above as we mentioned earlier with the acetabulum uh, of the hip bone to form the hip joint and inferiorly it articulates with the tibia and batilla as well to form the uh, knee joint now so there is articulation above and below and we can for uh, to make it like easier to study it i would like to uh, divide it into three parts the proximal part the shaft or let's say see this the shaft and the distal part so we have distal part the proximal part and the shaft so let us start with the proximal uh, part of the femur and when you look there you will find oh yes there is a head and there is a neck and there is a couple of structures here um, uh, toward the uh, shaft but here back again to the head look at the head which is uh, as you know when you look to the uh, inferior diagram this is the acetabulum I think you remember that and this is the head of the femur and uh, it's good to know that the uh, uh, um, uh, head of the femur has a kind of non-articular part near the center of it, it that's known as fovea cavities when the fovea cavities there is a, a, a ligament attached to it as you see here which is the ligament of the head of the femur this is the head of the femur yes so there is a ligament known the ligament of the head of the femur attached to the fovea cavities of course with the uh, a branch uh, from obturator artery known as acetabular branch to supply the head of the uh, femur pass uh, there uh, along with the uh, this ligament or the ligament of the head of the femur so what else in your body if you look to yourself you have a head and after the head you have a constricted area known as the neck and similarly to the femur this is the head and this is the constricted area which is that known as the neck look at the angle between um, the uh, 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 head and the shaft here this angle approximately I would say about 125 degree that uh, you know that's the neck if you look at here was connected to the um, acetabulum it's uh, 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 projected superior medially superior medially and slightly a little bit anteriorly or to the forward now also what we have what we can see in the proximal part of the uh, femur yes you can see very clearly the uh, uh, two projected uh, bones the greater trochanter and another smaller uh, uh, project bone medially which is the uh, uh, lesser trochanter so you have greater trochanter and lesser trochanter these two projected bones for muscle attachment we'll talk a little bit about it and look at it we are looking to the uh, this is an anterior view of the proximal part of the femur not posterior view so anteriorly the greater trochanter and lesser trochanter connected um, uh, between each other by a kind of a line of a bone known as intertrochantric line because between two trochanters right so anteriorly it's a line right intertrochantric line which is uh, also what's the importance of this ridge this is for attachment mainly say uh, for the uh, iliofemoral uh, iliofemoral um, ligament which is we will talk about it when we um, cover the hip uh, cover the hip joint iliofemoral ligament between the ilium and femur of course okay now let us follow the um, 
uh, uh, inter trochanteric line. When you follow the inter trochanteric line that connects between the greater trochanter and lesser trochanter, you will find that it twisted posteriorly. Let us follow it posteriorly and have a look to the posterior view, right? So, again, this is lesser trochanter, but you're looking to the proximal part of the femur posteriorly. So, so this is the, um, the inter trochanteric line that continues posteriorly as pectineal line pectineal line which is this line or ridge for attachment of pectineus muscle right sometimes they call it a spiral line because it's like a spiral shape right so but it's a continuation of intertrochanteric line anteriorly once moved and twisted posteriorly now it becomes a pectineal line or and or you call it a spiral line and as um, as I mentioned, once you uh, continue with the pectineal uh, line, you will find yourself merged with the linear uh, aspira. So, um, we have to uh, uh, mention that the uh, greater trochanter and the lesser trochanter connected posteriorly, not anteriorly, because anteriorly we covered that here, but posteriorly they connect, uh, connected by intertrochantric crest, not line. A crest now in the upper half of this crest you will find a small protruded area known as quadrated tubercle this posteriorly quadrated tubercle uh, in the upper half of the intertricantry crest is for attachment of quadratus femoris muscle quadratus femoris um, uh, muscle now what else Yes, greater to counter here. If I would erase, um, erase everything here. So uh, this is again greater uh, the, the greater to counter. It continues posteriorly, and when you go posteriorly here, you will find there is a groove here. This um, uh, uh, groove known as a truc or fossa, known as a trochanteric fossa. This is the trochanteric fossa. Here is the trochanteric uh, fossa. This fossa, guys, for the attachment of the tendon of obturator uh, externus muscle. Obturator externus muscle. Okay, now let us shift to the uh, shaft of the femur. Any extended part. It's called shaft. So when you take a cross section from the femur, the shaft of the femur, you will find it has three surfaces and three border. Anteriorly here, you'll find this is the anterior surface, this is the lateral, and this is the medial surface. Pretty easy. And the margin, which is the sharp area in between, there is a medial margin, lateral margin, and posterior margin. Most importantly is the posterior margin. Look at it here. You are looking to the posterior view of the shaft of the femur. This is the post, this is the linea aspera. Linea aspera formed the posterior border. Look, it's like protruded. To the back right this is the linea aspera or the posterior uh, uh, border of the shaft of the femur now the linea aspera this one let me erase it to show you it again yes this is a protruded bone posteriorly it continues inferiorly and superiorly let us follow it superiorly once you reach the proximal end of the femur it divides or diverge into pectineal line as you see here the location of attachment we said that the pectineal line we mentioned that earlier or spiral line attachment of pectineous muscle and also the lateral uh, protruded bone or tuberosity is the gluteal tuberosity you see here so it has medial and lateral part this gluteal tuberosity as i mentioned it's for attachment of gluteus maximus muscle gluteus maximus muscle okay now again to the linea aspira this is the linea aspira posteriorly when you uh, continues downward Again, it diverges into uh, lateral and this is the lateral and this is the medial supracondylar ridges or lines. Supracondylar ridges or lines.
So why? Because this is a condyle and this is a bicondyle. So this is a supra because it's above the condyle. Supracondylar lines. One, medi one laterally and one medially. Always the head is medially. So this is medial supracondylar line. Now, the medial supracondylar line, once you continue with it near the uh, 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 medial condyle, it ends by a small tubercle here called the adductor tubercle, which form attachment of adductor muscles. This is adductor tubercle medially, right? And uh, uh, what about the... Um, uh, let us now shift uh, again this is the lateral supracondyle nothing that much to say about it that ends um, laterally with the lateral condyle now between these ridges the medial and lateral area there is a triangular space this triangular area you see here guys is the uh, uh, floor of popliteal fossa. We will talk about the popliteal fossa and the contents of the of this fossa later after a couple of lectures, right? But this is the floor of the popliteal uh, fossa. Now, the um, distal end of the femur or the lower end of the femur you look into the femur here laterally here you are looking to it anteriorly right and again here is posteriorly so we um it's good to, again to go back to the um, uh, anterior view. Look at the medial uh, condyle, which is larger than the lateral uh, condyle. And in between, there is, uh, uh, they are the medial and lateral condyles. And here, guys, these condyles, the lateral and medial condyles, are separated anteriorly by... Um, facet or a surface for articulation of the patella you know the patella is located here so this facet or this surface is the patellar surface or articular patellar uh, uh, surface but posteriorly the medial condyle and the lateral condyle um, are separated by fossa or notch known as inter condylar fossa why it's inter because it's in between between the condyles right between lateral and medial condyle posteriorly there is intercondylar fossa that means you will find the fossa just posteriorly but anteriorly no you will find like uh, the patellar surface articular patellar surface for articulation with the uh, patella because you know that the femur articulates with the uh, patella now um, it's important to say what, what I'm gonna say now is something is important but I know maybe um, you're gonna feel it like early because we will talk about that in details when we talk about the knee joint but again look at the medial condyle for example here so the medial surface of the 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 the, the, the um, sorry the lateral surface of medial condyle because this is medially and this is laterally and this is the medial condyle so the lateral surface of medial condyle uh, 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 bears the attachment of posterior crochet ligament in the knee joint you have anterior crochet and posterior crochet ligaments okay so the lateral surface of medial condyle here you see this spot this is the attachment for the posterior crochet ligament. On the other hand, this is the lateral condyle, yes. So the medial surface of lateral condyle bears the attachment for anterior crochet ligament. Okay. Now, yes, we mentioned that the femur 
articulates with the patella. The patella is, uh, we consider it as a sesamoid bone, as you see here, which is like, um, again, a diamond shape or triangular uh, shape that's located inside the quadriceps femoris tendon. This is the quadriceps femoris tendon, so the patella located inside it. So the superior, media, la lateral, and uh, medial surface of the or border of the uh, patella or margin of the pa of the patella uh, attached to the quadriceps femoris tendon, while the inferior or the apex of the patella inferiorly uh, uh, attached to the or uh, attached yes to the um, patellar ligament, this ligament here and to the TPL tuberosity inferiorly. So again, again, this is the patella in which above medially and laterally attached to quadriceps um, femoris tendon while its apex here attached to patellar ligament that that attaches it to the tpl tuberosity is a protruded bone you can feel it by your finger also the patella you can uh, feel it you can catch it and you can move it when your um, uh, knee is extended right not flexed when it is extended yes you can move it right and left above and below so and uh, what else to say here? Yes, anteriorly, as uh, I mentioned, it's um, subcutaneous, the patella, but posteriorly, it articulates uh, with the articular surface of patella on the femur, right? 